Make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I'm Chaplain Newland, your Iron Dragon Shepherd, bringing you a spiritual fitness moment for this second week of Advent. So today is Wednesday, in the second week of Advent. The themes of Advent that you are probably familiar with are hope, peace, joy, and love, which would make this the week of peace. One of my favorite things about liturgical worship is how many different pieces and parts there are to our history. What if I told you that those four themes of Advent, hope, peace, joy, and love, were a relatively modern invention, but that they were built upon a medieval foundation? Back in the medieval life of the church, when preaching a sermon was a new technology, preachers took the four Sundays of Advent and spoke about the four last things, building on that piece of Advent, which is both the beginning and the end of the church year. The beginning as we wait for Christ's incarnation, and the end as we look forward to the expectation of Christ's second coming. Both comings are pieces of this Advent puzzle. And those early preachers spoke of the four last things on the four Sundays of Advent. Unlike the more palatable hope, peace, joy, and love, the four last things are death, judgment, heaven, and hell. Well, you can probably see why we've updated the themes, because for most people, it takes a little bit of explaining to get to a point where you're excited to hear sermons about death, judgment, heaven, and hell. I mean, heaven sounds pretty good, but otherwise, you can tell that this technology was developed before the advent of church growth planners. So, by that earlier standard, this second week of Advent is the week of judgment, which sounds to our modern ears fairly negative. Why would we want to speak about judgment when we are looking forward with expectation to a joyous beginning? But the truth is that for the Christian, judgment is something to be looked forward to, something to be treasured. Why would we not want to be judged by God's merciful judgment? Why would we not want the things of this world that are broken and damaged and hurtful to be judged and taken away, even if they are within us, burnt away, so that we might be more pure before the judgment seat of Christ. It's not quite as beautiful a sentiment, perhaps, as a whole week dedicated to the topic of peace. But the truth, I think, as a believer, is that real peace is not going to be ours until the real judgment of God becomes real in our lives as well. I'd like to share with you this week a poem, a poem that has been turned into a hymn of the church. This poem is by G.K. Chesterton, an author that all good Anglicans ought to be familiar with, for he is an author of many, many works, including the popular Father Brown Murder Mysteries, which, if you have not caught on the BBC, I highly recommend. But he wrote other things which are a little bit more serious than Father Brown and his shenanigans, and one of them is this poem, a poem that has become a hymn titled, O God of Earth and Altar, and it builds on that theme of judgment, and it looks forward to God's judgment, as I have suggested we might, as a thing to be treasured, to be embraced to be a piece of our journey back to the perfection that is life with God in its fullness. Like o God of earth and altar, bow down and hear our cry. Our earthly rulers falter, our people drift and die. The walls of gold entomb us, the swords of scorn divide. Take not thy thunder from us, but take away our pride. From all that terror teaches, from lies of tongue and pen, from all the easy speeches that comfort cruel men, from sale and profanation of honor and the sword, from sleep and from damnation, deliver us, good Lord. Tie in a living tether, the prince and priest and thrall, bind all our lives together, smite us and save us all. In ire and exultation, aflame with faith and free, lift up 
a living nation, a single sword to thee. For the merciful judgment of God, for the blessings of light and darkness in Advent, for all that we have been given and all that we look forward to, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 